I'm Jeremy Cooley, and I'm a product marketing manager here at Atlassian. Uh, and then today I'm joined by Jason DeCruz, uh, product manager, senior product manager at Atlassian as well. Today we're going to showcase the mission by highlighting Jira Service Management's place in the software development lifecycle specifically. This process can be quite messy. Software development can be quite a messy process. As you see here, there's tons of tasks that each team um, or each phase needs to focus on. And we're going to try to connect the dots and how Jira Service Management can streamline this process a little bit more for you. When we think about discovery, we think of a continuous process. Everyone over here is probably familiar with the part that involves designing, prototyping, but this continues well after shipping in terms of iterating based on feedback or suggestions or bug reports from your customers, and also looking inward into your team to understand the team health, improve their efficiency, and identify bottlenecks and risks. I'm going to cover how software teams can use uh, Jira service management to get closer to their customers, as well as use Atlassian analytics to better measure your team's performance. Now, one of the biggest problems we hear from our customers is that their customer feedback is siloed away, often in a different ITSM tool that only IT has access to. Let's see how Jira service management uh, helps uh, connect the dots. Now, whether your customers are internal or external, we have a number of channels to streamline demand intake and feedback. Let's start with the portal or the help center as we call it. This is a one-stop shop to enable customers to report bugs or provide suggestions and feature requests. Even within Atlassian, we leverage Jira service management heavily. Our support teams are used to handle support requests. We also have projects where customers can submit feature requests or, or suggestions. When support teams receive issues from, uh, from customers, they can look at these projects to see if there's an existing feature request or bug and, and link the support uh, issue uh, to that. And if it's not there, they can create a new one. Now, this also helps product managers and the dev team, who also has, have access to that, by the way. For product managers, it's great to understand the pulse of the customer. You can engage in conversations over there. You can dive deep into their uh, different uh, use cases, and also helps you prioritize items on your roadmap. For developers, they can solicit feedback for, for potential uh, solutions, get customers to sign up for an early access program, and in general, empathize better with customer problems. Now, you can customize this uh, portal to allow you to display your organization's branding. And in terms of the, of the request intake, you can, there are a variety of fields that you can use. And you can set up in such a way that it can also be used for reporting and analytics a bit later. If that's too much time, Jira Service Management also has over 300 form templates to spin this up really quickly. As an example shown over here, um, as a software team who wants customers to report bugs, they can just create the bug report form template. Now, the advantage of this is that these are dynamic and cascading forms, because it can only present the relevant fields to fill based on your earlier input. So it's not one big you know, giant form. You can also leverage advanced form validation capabilities. So teams can quickly get the, the right information that they need in order to make better decisions. The other channel is email. As much as some organizations try to get uh, you know, rid of it, email is here to stay. We support the tried and trusted um, email uh, channel. With every Jira service management uh, project, there is an email address provided which you can share to your customers so that any emails they send in will create issues in Jira service management. You can also connect your existing inboxes if you have them. The third one is around our chat tool, or conversational ticketing. Now, teams who develop for internal employees, for example, can use their favorite communication tools like Slack or Microsoft Teams for request intake and logging bugs. Now, at Atlassian, we dog food our own uh, products. Like, if I spot a bug in Confluence, for example, the quickest thing I can do is find the team on Slack, go to their channel, and, and buzz the team responsible. If they've set up Jira service management, that entire conversation can be captured as an issue in, in Jira service management for future reference. 
Now, great, we've got all this information from our customers and Jira service management. But how do we get this through to, let's say, a Jira software sprint board? We do this through our powerful automation capabilities. Now, automation consists of a number of triggers, conditions, and actions. In this example, I'm trying to do something simple to say that whenever there's a bug reported by a customer on the portal, create a corresponding issue on a Jira software uh, uh, project. In this case, the trigger that I selected will be whenever an issue gets created. Now, since I only want bugs, I set up a condition to say that if the request type is report a system problem, then uh, do the following action. And in this case, the action is to just create an issue in the web development team's board, and I just copy the, the title and the summary. Now that concludes everything around uh, channels. Now let's talk about how you can use analytics to supercharge your team's performance. Now teams want to understand what's working today and where the opportunities for improvement might lie. The best teams continuously refine and optimize how they work over time. And that's where Atlassian Analytics can help. Um, I'll, I'll walk through a, a demo a bit later, but just to give you a, a, a flavor, you can create a dashboard from one of our pre-made uh, templates. We have templates for Jira software, Jira service management, as well as Ops Genie in there currently. You can view your uh, Dora metrics. For example, metrics like change failure rate, lead time for changes, and mean time to recovery, they come out of the box. But if you're so inclined, you can create them from scratch within minutes. We also have uh, data from our open DevOps platform coming soon that will bring in uh, uh, deployments and uh, comment data as well. And speaking of creating reports, you can easily create custom dashboards using our Visual SQL Builder. You can combine data from Jira software issues, JSM incidents, as well as in third party data like uh, cost data, for example. Another thing that you can do is collaborate on the dashboard. You can also set up subscriptions when values are triggered so that you can get the information that you require. A question often comes up is around access control. For those who need strict access control, Atlassian Analytics provides all the controls you need to ensure privacy and compliance. You can choose your data based on projects for Jira software and Jira service management and schema for assets. You can also control who has access to the data. Only those given access to the connection will be able to do anything with the data. There are also separate access controls for, for the dashboards that have been created from this data. And you can be as open as you'd like, depending on your company policy. Now, what I'd like to do is walk through a brief demo of Atlassian Analytics and showcase some of the shiny new functionality. Hey everyone, I'm going to run you through a quick demo of our Atlassian Analytics offering to showcase the new functionality we have to help software teams get the most out of Jira service management and Jira software. Atlassian Analytics is available to you if you have at least one Enterprise Edition product out of Jira software and Jira service management. You have a choice of data sources, including the Atlassian Data Lake for Atlassian Data, as well as a variety of third-party data sources for any third-party data. Only org admins have the ability to create connections to Atlassian data sources. You can pick from a variety of Jira service management and Jira software projects. In this case, let's assume that the legal service desk has some private information, so you can omit that, as well as any legal contracts from your Insight CMDB. After creating the connection, it's now time to give access to the data. Depending on your company, you can either choose to grant access to everyone who has access to Atlassian Analytics or only specific people. And for these specific people, you can choose what permission levels to grant access to. Atlassian Analytics allows you to create dashboards from scratch or use one of our predefined uh, templates. You just need to pick the data source that you've just created and you have templates for Jira service management, which includes request management, change management, as well as incident management practices. There are also reports for the Insight CMDB, your Jira software projects, 
You also have your software flow metrics, if those are things you track, as well as Ops Genie alert analytics for those teams who use Jira Service Management and Ops Genie for alerts. In this case, my team uses Jira Service Management for alerting. So I'll create an alert analytics dashboard. Now this dashboard comes with a number of filters and charts. For example, there's a date filter allowing you to pick your relevant time frame. You can also choose to look at only closed or open alerts if you so wish to. This dashboard comes with a number of charts, including alerts by priority and date and alerts by team. Now all of this is infinitely customizable, so you can either modify this or you can add charts to this. Let me go ahead and add a chart. And I want to look at the number of incidents that I have in Jira Service Management. Now, Atlassian Analytics has this Visual SQL Editor, which allows you to create custom reports with drag drop functionality with data from Jira Software, Jira Service Management, Ops Genie, as well as account data. Now, in order to create a chart showing incidents by impact, I will go to the incident table and pick the issue ID and I want a count of distinct issue IDs. And then I will pick the impact field. And these are all custom fields which are relevant to the incident management category. I can quickly add a filter. As you know, the main dashboard had a date filter. So what I can do is link this chart to that date filter. So when the date filter is changed, the chart automatically updates. Now the query runs and we get a default chart out of the box as well as a table below. So you can edit the table and edit the charts. Now let's say I want to add source as another field. So I'll just pick source and run this. Now you can't necessarily use this over here. So I will just change the type of chart being used and you can see your incidents by impact and source. As you can see, some have not been classified correctly, so there are null values. You may want to remove them. Now I can just save it to the dashboard. Now, Classic Analytics allows full customization of the dashboard, so you can drag the chart wherever you want. In this case, I'm just placing it where there's already a gap in the dashboard. And there you have it. Now you can also collaborate on the chart. For example, I can tag somebody on my team to tell them to go and check why there are so many null values in the issues. Clearly the incidents haven't been captured properly. You can also share the dashboard, set up subscriptions. For example, you can share the link to anyone with the people and you've given them uh, permission or you can put it into a Confluence page. You can also add things like an email subscription. For example, I want to send this dashboard to the mobile team, but I only want the alerts for that team to go through. I can use one of the filters and filter it by the mobile team. And then you just add the recipients and the subscription is created.